Going Beyond is a presentation of Beyond Housing, helping entire communities become better places to live with Rare Gem Productions. Today's Going Beyond radio show is made possible by Commerce Bank. We're going beyond. Today on Going Beyond. Today we're going to talk about a whole bunch of different things. Joining me on the show is State Senator Maria Chappelle Nadal from the 14th Senate District here in St. Louis County. People being hogtied and kicked unconscious, that story needs to be told. If our protesters do not take the role that they should in the legislature, they're going to miss the train entirely. And I need their help. I supported them. I continue to support them. But they need to start coming to Jefferson. Jefferson City and meeting face to face with individual legislators, not speaking to the choir. I mean, I'm already on their side. Beyond housing is going beyond. That and more ahead today on Going Beyond with Chris Kramire, right after this. Hi there, I'm Agent Answers for Commerce Bank, and I'm crawling through the ventilation shaft of your office building. Actually, I'm not. That would be creepy. But I am constantly working behind the scenes to give customers the answers they need. Nearest restroom, end of the hall, take a right, third door on your left. Hungry, lovely diner just around the corner. The Turkey Club is ridiculous. I'm also pretty helpful when it comes to finding you the right loan at Commerce Bank. In fact, I consider it my mission. Home equity loans, auto loans, mortgages, credit cards, whatever it is, Commerce will work to lower your payments and reduce fees so we can get you exactly what you want. Agent Answers, we have a customer who'd like to finance a deck. 10-4, I'm on it. It's a multi-level design with bamboo wood and a sandstone fireplace. Interesting. That's the second one today. This is Commerce Bank. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. This table self-destruct in five seconds. Well, not really. That just felt like the right way to end this. Rare Gym Productions proudly presenting the positive. Welcome to this edition of Going Beyond. I'm your host, Chris Kramer, President and CEO of Beyond Housing. Today, we're going to talk about a whole bunch of different things. Joining me on the show is State Senator Maria Chappelle Nadal from the 14th Senate District here in St. Louis County. Covers 41 municipalities and literally has her finger on the pulse of a lot of different things that are in the news and of importance to folks in community today. Senator, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me today, Chris. So let's start the conversation talking a little bit about kind of the let's call it the post-Ferguson space. There's a lot of things, a lot of conversations are continuing that are happening both in the state capitol, but here locally. Kind of what's your sense of kind of where we're at and some things you'd like to see happen that maybe aren't happening today? Well, first of all, I would like to point out to your audience, you know, when you look back in history, you had to have a Malcolm X in order to have a Martin Luther King. You had to have a W.E.B. Du Bois in order to have a Booker T. Washington. While I do believe in agitation, which is the action that many of our protesters are providing, at the same time, some of us have to do our job and we need each other. So we do not work in isolation whatsoever when it comes to the peaceful protesters who are out there. I always talk about their First Amendment right as long as people are staying positive and they are not getting involved in violence. I will support their constitutional rights to the end. However, the disconnect is coming because we are having to change some of our statutes. And I don't have the protesters who have been on the streets, who I've been on the streets with, who are coming and engaging with our legislators. And that is how we pass legislation. People have to come up and have some bullet points in mind of what legislation should be supported and what legislation should not be supported. And that is simply not happening right now. So how do we think we can make that happen? Because clearly there have been some, let's call them longer of tooth organizing organizations that have been around who kind of know that process and system. I know there's been some disconnect between some of the protest groups and some of the old guard. So how do we start connecting some of those dots? So we have the energy, the passion, the desire for change, which is needed necessary in a lot of different ways to, again, plug into a system, right? You can't change the system unless you're working within the system in some form or fashion. Well, here's the important message to all protesters. The train is about to leave the station and either you're on it or you're not. 
when it comes to the legislative process, we are in for five months. Most of the bills that deal with Ferguson right now have already been pre-filed. I've been negotiating already with many of the legislators, many of which have been on their side. And when they have experiences such as they did on the opening day of session, their support for change statutorily for Ferguson and for protesters cools down quite a bit. And so it's time for some of our protesters who want to be legislative leaders to come up, schedule appointments with people who do not represent the area because it's going to take at least 18 votes out of the Senate to pass a measure. There are certain pieces of legislation that we're looking at. One, having a special prosecuting attorney in a case where an individual is shot and killed who is unarmed. That is in my Senate Bill 21. But we also have language in Senate Bill 21 that deals with human rights issues. I was tear gassed on a one-way street for three hours hours with 150 young people. There's a woman I recall that same night on North Winds Estates who was six months pregnant, forced face down by police officers and kicked. And that story needs to be told. People being hogtied and kicked unconscious, that story needs to be told. If our protesters do not take the role that they should in the legislature, they're going to miss the train entirely. And I need their help. I supported them. I continue to support them. But they need to start coming to Jefferson City and meeting face to face with individual legislators, not speaking to the choir. I mean, I'm already on their side. They should be speaking to legislators who are going to vote on the agenda that they have and that have already been filed, the issues that have been filed. Have the protesters suggested that they weren't interested or they just haven't gotten to that space? Or is it some I mean, what's the because obviously you've stayed in contact with. And again, there's a number of different groups and there's key leaders. And as a whole, again, it's not a uniform one organization, one leader. Right. And folks have said that's a good thing. And I would yeah. agree. I think that, I do that's think okay. that's a good thing. However, I will tell you in one art organization in particular, historically, I've had a lot of respect for. But for one individual who chose to not communicate with our office like you do. So we had our opening on Wednesday. We schedule our events, our meetings months in advance. And the expectation was that I would be at a meeting on Friday, the following Friday. Well, that doesn't work. And it didn't work that day. So what they decided to do is to be very negative in the media about me not showing up to a meeting with a 48 hour notice. Just so happened to be I was meeting with the governor and the state treasurer and the secretary of state. And to have one of those meetings as a senator representing a minority district doesn't even happen twice a year. So I was not going to cancel that. As senators, we represent over 200,000 people. State representatives only represent 37. So they have a lot more time than senators do. I have about 10 senators who are in my senatorial district, but there's certain protocols that many of our protesters don't know. And I'm not saying it's their fault. It's not at all. But if they're willing to listen, you know, always engage, always have a paper trail. Email. If you want an elected official to show up to an event, give them a week or two or three weeks or a month in advance so that they can go through their schedule. If you want to talk about legislation, make sure you're doing bill tracking. My Senate Bill 21 really covers a lot of the injuries that were caused in the last five months. And, you know, for Tef Poe, who I love and adore, he was on Roland Martin's show the other day. And he said that he didn't think that there was any legislator who was doing anything about a special prosecuting attorney being appointed. Well, that's not true because two of the African Americans who represent St. Louis have legislation dealing with special prosecuting attorneys. In my Senate Bill 21 on page 4, line 28, and Senator Nasheed, she also has a Senate Bill dealing with special prosecuting attorneys when there is an unarmed person who's killed by a police officer. So again, there's this disconnect, right? So there's this energy and passion and emotion of folks want change. And again, you know, I don't think anyone would argue with, you know, we'd like for things to be different, but there is a legislative process at the state level, as well as the local and federal level to say, how do you do this? And how do you work within the context of that system? That doesn't mean you have to give up on your voice, on your passion, Not on things you all. want change, but there is an existing system that is there to work in. So your guidance, you know, to a little bit of everybody is, you know, have conversations with those folks who are in positions mm-hmm. that can be helpful. Uh, again, they don't have to 
convince you of their cause, but there's particularly in Jefferson City, it's a republic controlled, you know, both sides of the, uh, let's say, process, right? So you have to be able to tell your story mm-hmm. and make it compelling. And my sense is, and then maybe you correct me if I'm wrong, Senator, is people are willing to do some stuff around Ferguson, Republican and Democrat. Yes. Right? This, you know what? It's interesting. While we cannot pass Medicaid reform and expansion, we can do something legislatively dealing with Ferguson. This is in a historic moment in the legislature, in the General Assembly. And if these young people even had any clue how far they could go with policy, if they would... Let me just go backwards just really quickly. I was teaching classes, civic engagement classes for a while. I was on the streets for a very long time. And then I realized that many of my constituents didn't know, like the democratic process, they didn't know how to engage with their representatives or with their council people or with the mayors throughout the area. So I started teaching. And then when the announcement was made that there was no indictment, the building that I taught in was burned down. And so I was talking to Rasheen Aldridge, who is a remarkable young man. And he said, well, why don't you teach us? And I said, Rasheen, I was teaching you and my building was burned. I love teaching. I sit on the school board in University City because I believe in the education of all children. As you know, I spent a year and a half writing legislation dealing with education because I believe in the future of children and making sure they all have an opportunity to learn. When it comes to Ferguson, there was an injury at the very beginning where our young people didn't know about their First Amendment right. They didn't know that the curfew and the five-second rule were unconstitutional. I knew that. They didn't realize that that being tear gassed on a one way street for three hours like I was and 150 other young people was normal. That's not normal. That's inhumane. And that's why my Senate Bill 21 deals with having entities like Amnesty International on the scene anytime there's a human disaster and there is a state of emergency called by the governor. We have to have third party entities who are there to make sure that our human rights are still as significant as any other right that we have. Do you think any of the existing organizations who do community organizing and who have done the, you know, the lobbying work in Jeff City can do anything different in reaching out to these young protesters to try to say, I know I'm not part of necessarily your group or your movement right now, Mm -hmm. but I'm with you, supporting you, and I want to help you in the process. Is there any more that the old guard can do in terms of just having them understand process, not dilute their message, not, you know, again, take away from what they want, but just say, let me help you kind of navigate this. So let me tell you where we are. Yes, there is a disconnect between the old guard from the 60s, who are 60, 70, 80 years old now, and the young people who are on the streets. And here's what they forget. For people like you and I who are between the two generations, right. they don't even want to listen to us. You know, what happened in Ferguson hurts you and I just as much as it hurts them. And they're thinking this is all about their fight. Well, excuse me, I wasn't around in the 60s and 70s. So this fight in Ferguson is about my livelihood, too. Right. Right. And it's not just about them. Right. It's about the children that I hope to have in the future and about your children. You and I are part of a generation that did not get to experience the 60s. Nope. nope. Sure and didn't. so what happened in Ferguson is an injury to us, just like it is. And some, not everyone, but some of these people need to stop being so selfish and understand that we're hurting, too. Again, I think the idea of casting a net across a whole segment of folks because they look alike or the same age, anything else is inaccurate and inappropriate, right? So you can't assume just because someone is a certain age or a certain color or a certain gender that they're like everybody else, right? That exactly. they all think and act the same way and it's not. And in the movement, we have people who look like everything sure. and they're part of the family. Sure. You know, you could be white, you can be transgender, you could be whatever you want to be. And they are equally seen as people who support the movement for justice. And that's clearly when, you know, we see big change historically. It's because lots of folks came together and found the common ground, right? So again, maybe this is a evolutionary process, right? Because it was only August 9th. I mean, we're at, uh, you know, middle of January, end of January, the subsequent year. So hopefully this is a evolutionary process and that over time folks can begin to see what can we do differently if we're not having the impact that we want. If our listeners wanted to maybe engage you and your staff, but as well as others, as you said, right? How do we convince others about some changes? Is there a place they should go? Or is there a place for them to reach out to, again, get connected to the process to, Absolutely. to, to change? Let, let me give you all of my information. On Twitter, I am at Maria 
Chappelle, C H A P P E L L E N, and on Facebook, Maria Chappelle Nadal, and my email is Maria dot Chappelle Nadal at Senate dot Mo dot Gov. And what I can tell our listeners, I promise you, if you reach out to the senator, you will hear back. She is engaged. She is passionate about the work and she uh, stays close to her constituents. Uh, Senator Maria Chappelle Nadal, thanks so much for being on the show. Thank you so much. We're going beyond. Commerce Bank is the proud sponsor of today's Going Beyond radio show. Going Beyond is a presentation of Beyond Housing, helping entire communities become better places to live with Rare Gym Productions. Proudly promoting, presenting, and producing positive programs. The neighborhood is where you live, and we want to keep it strong and vibrant. This is Chris Kramer with Beyond Housing. We are going beyond. Chris Kramer, President and CEO of Beyond Housing, located at 41. 41- 56 Manchester, phone number 314-533-0600. The only organization in the St. Louis region that offers access to affordable housing. Wherever we work, our goal is to help transform people, families, and communities so that they achieve the skills, strategies, resources, and commitment to succeed for the long term. See our work at beyondhousing.org. Podcasts for Going Beyond can be heard, downloaded, and shared by visiting hallelujah1600.com. Listed under the music tab on demand going beyond is another positive production of rare gem productions hi there i'm agent answers for commerce bank and i'm crawling through the ventilation shaft of your office building actually i'm not that would be creepy but i am constantly working behind the scenes to give customers the answers they need nearest restroom end of the hall take a right third door on your left hungry lovely diner just around the corner the turkey club is ridiculous I'm also pretty helpful when it comes to finding you the right loan at Commerce Bank. In fact, I consider it my mission. Home equity loans, auto loans, mortgages, credit cards, whatever it is, Commerce will work to lower your payments and reduce fees so we can get you exactly what you want. Agent Answers, we have a customer who'd like to finance a deck. 10-4, I'm on it. It's a multi-level design with bamboo wood and a sandstone fireplace. Interesting. That's the second one today. This is Commerce Bank. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. This tape will self-destruct in five seconds. Well, not really. That just felt like the right way to end this.